My name is Dave Lepley and we're here in Bellevue, Ohio. We go by Lepley Farms LLC here. In 1964, we built our, our first feedlot uh, and it actually held 300 head, which was large back in those days. But we've been planning to expand in the livestock business for quite a long time and it, we just never could really come up with the right facility to move into the future. Up here by Lake Erie, we have to worry about so many things, and especially the weather. It's very hard if you have a large livestock herd to manage the manure. Prior to a facility like this, we had to have a big cement pad with, we just had some curbing on it, we piled it. We were spreading on frozen ground on the snow and stuff, and you know, that's just what you had to do. We had to come up with some system to manage all the different elements of raising livestock. <laughs> he wanted to be part of the action too. <laughs> we had a whole list of things that we wanted to cover. The first was environmental, and the second was cattle comfort. What drew us to Summit Livestock was the idea they, they understood livestock. They, under, they understood how to build you know, a livestock facility. They had a lot of experience. They actually brought stuff to the table that was going to be helpful. And we, you know, like ridge vents and eave heights and, you know, the depth of the pit and all the things that we wanted to incorporate in the building, they, they had an answer for. The uh, facility, it was built for one guy to manage a thousand head. It takes less time to feed a thousand head now than it did simply two years ago feeding 300. So it's been a really good experience for us. When you build a facility like this, it takes all the work out of the, out of the job. I don't plan on retiring though, I just, this is kind of my fun anyways. We wanted enough eave height to let the air flow freely through, and then we wanted a ridge vent in here so on a still day that the, the heat would rise and you know, be able to evacuate up through the top. And it doesn't matter if the wind's blowing from the north or the south or the east or the west, we have openings every which way. But then if we have a hard weather event, we can shut down any quadrant we want and leave the rest of it open. Livestock, I mean, they're really durable, so they'll take a lot of heat, they'll take a lot of cold. But if you can manage that and keep them comfortable, that's, that, that's our goal. And you know, once we know our livestock, once we get them in, we see how they act. We walk through them every day, uh, mainly twice a day, and they'll tell you what's going on. You can just read their eyes. You can read the way they're, you know, just standing, or you know, or if they're happy, they they bounce around a little bit. They'll suck just like their little calf. If they're not feeling good, they'll go in a corner, and you, and you, you can tell somebody's not feeling good. We'll go look at them as we built the pens, we, we knew we wanted to have a safe space for animals that were lame or if they got a sickness or whatever. So we come up with this concept of a hospital pen. Physically, they can relax. They're not competing for food, they're not competing for water, they're not competing for a space to lay down. So our sickness rate has just pretty much vanished. All of our daily feed records, I enter into our computer system and I graph every day. And that way I can see if we have a weather trend or we have something else that is affecting the way they're consuming feed. When it was super cold at the end of the, uh, December, the 1st of January, our feed intakes went flat. So we started talking to our veterinarian and nutritionist and what we found out, and we gotta solve it yet, but our water was about 34 degrees in the super cold days. And with the water being so cold, the animals wouldn't drink because they were cold. Well, if they don't drink, they don't eat. And so we're trying to come up with a way to keep our waters at 65 degrees year round. And that's the optimal temperature that the cattle like. So if we can keep the water there, then I think our intakes will just stay on that upward trajectory all the way through our feeding period. And that's what we really wanted to to master in this operation was to um, take everything that we could manage and manage it, put a number to it. And, and this type of facility really lends itself to doing that. If we had a feeding event where our intakes went down or something happened, we should be able to pinpoint it fairly quickly. When you, when you start to manage numbers, I says, instead of it turning into a job, 
you make it into an adventure and you start finding out things and you start thinking of, you know, what else can I measure that's relatable? You know, how can I make it easier? And, you know, can you make it better as far as efficiencies, animal health, environmental? I mean, there's, there's so many opportunities in a number. And if you can, you know, if you can do it right and really measure correctly, I said sky's the limit.